So this is episode 11 of My So Rare Journey. If you don't know what it is, it's basically a series where I go through every episode right from my very start in the Rookie League all the way to now. You know, every time I find something useful, I'll post about it, I'll make a video, and hopefully it helps you on your journey. There's a whole playlist if you want to watch it from the start on my channel. And yeah, so let's get into it. This, this episode, what we're going to go through is panic buying for a deadline an absolute classic for any so rare manager and my future plans given they have announced a one out of a thousand scarcity coming out and of course the new season cards are probably just around the corner given the leagues have just started and they said they want to get them out within two weeks and then finally i do want to gloat slash share a bit of my success because you know you're not always right but when you are you know nice to celebrate it so let's get into it you can see on screen um, my previous week result I came just short of the 250 ETH threshold, but I got above 200 points. So I got, you know, 0.01 ETH. Um, not the best results, but if you look at my team, overall, I didn't deserve anything. I got, I thought I was on for an absolutely outstanding week. You know, every fixture lined up for me. I had five rares in a team and didn't get a goal, didn't get an assist, don't, didn't even get a clean sheet, I don't think. So, you know, this happened. But the special thing is Latifi Blessing was signed on a deadline day transfer for one game week, and I just want to speak through how it went. Um, so first off, he got me to the rewards. So if I had just stuck with my guns, I would have lost out on 0.01 ETH, or as I call it, you know, 10 ETH. So let's um i've actually pulled him up here so i bought him for 121 um we'll just call it 121 i bought him for 121 and why that was crucial is because he was at 110 average on so rare data and someone wanted him so they went out and just bid that about you know two days before so i had the decision do i pay 10 percent over the market price for him for one game week and i did a bit of comparisons for other strikers and you know i saw across the mls and the other leagues that were playing all kind of forwards were you know overvalued they're all um creeping up in prices for the deadline i thought you know what i'm gonna have to get involved you know all forwards are overpriced or not overpriced as such but they're inflated all prices are inflated for forwards at the moment um just get one right my plan was to get one so i had five rares and i thought i had a really good chance at the rewards i wouldn't have done it if i didn't think i had a chance of rewards but overall paid one to one um i managed to get him in the game week and then sell him before the game week had started if you didn't know you can do that you know just clearing that up i got an offer of 115 so i paid one to one so i'd instantly lose you know six eth basically and it's you know it was the first offer and, you know, greedy me, you know, always tries and push the boundaries. But I thought this time, you know, it's in your plan, just sell him. You know, regardless of the other guy gets a good deal, just get rid of him. So that's what I did. I sold him for 115 before the game had even started. Always considered, you know, it's probably about a similar um, likelihood of him scoring 100 and him breaking a leg. So, you know, it's probably, you know, not a, a perfect 50-50, but it's similar. Um, I ended up selling him for that. And he ended up getting me 10 ETH as I described by hitting the threshold. So that's a four ETH net win. And then since then, he's come down in price. I'd say it's probably unrelated. He didn't have a good game and he did have a game week mid game. So, you know, for the weekend, he doesn't have a game. So I'm not saying, you know, I got out at a perfect time or anything. I'm just saying he has come down again since then. So overall, it was a success panic buying this player, but it wasn't really a panic buy at the end of the day. I'd fought it through on, you know, how much he can gain me. I thought he could gain me, you know, 0.02 ETH or 20 ETH and a card. And that would make up for any losses that I made in the short term. Uh, if you don't know, Surrey has just released a scaling system. So you can actually trade players a lot easier. They should be able to be kind of flipped in the same day now if you wanted to. And I didn't get to do that with Latif, but, you know, going forward, it'd be nice to see. Also, I just want to say I had no idea how good he was or if he was going to play. It's so hard for me in the MLS. I have really no knowledge, but you know, he played all the last games. He had like a 90% starting rate. So yeah, um, overall a success. So next I wanted to get into my future plans. Um, I should have my team up on here. Pretty much the same as what I've showed before, but you know, I haven't expanded on it. I haven't improved. I haven't got the goalie for the under 23s league. And I just think it's 
it's so much better worth waiting for next season's cards if they release them in two weeks, as they say. You know, what's two weeks in a Premier League season? What, you're missing two? Two games, probably, possibly three. Yes, prices might creep up because they're new season cards and, you know, it's a bit of hype at the start. But, you know, even if you wait four game weeks, right, prices, there'll be so many auctions that prices naturally will start to dip down. You get the insight of scouting them for four games as well. Um, so, you know, any shock surprises that manager have made, you know, dropping someone, you know, you won't have any of that. Um, overall, I just think it's the right decision. And adding on to that, you know, I'm saving up this um, ETH balance, as you can see here. It's actually... Um, slightly higher after, you know, like I said, I hit the thresholds and just um, got it then. But um, what I'm trying for is to dominate the scarcity league below, the one out of a thousand, because I always feel in this game it's probably better to dominate one league than to be a lower competitor of a division above. So, for example, I could sell all my cards and enter division three but my division three cards would be quite relatively weak to the rest of the teams. So I my strategy is always be the king of the division, you know, try and even if it means dropping down and that doesn't mean I'm dropping down, I'm going to try and compete in both, which is just, you know, additional benefits. I can think I can be competitive on a budget in both. I am going to put some more money in to get a goalkeeper for full transparency here. But overall, you know, try and be the king of the division. Okay, so on to the next thing. You'll know if you watched my, I think it was Wheeler Dealer episode where I did a, a little trade. I bought a bundle, I traded some to Pavel, and I basically came out with two cards in, let's pull them up here, in Jaden Braff and Song and Koo. I got them for 273, and let's see why that was such a success. You know, Song who I said in the episode has to go up. There's no way he goes further down. I could even call the bottom, to be honest, just to show off a little bit. But, you know, he has already sold for 273 on auction in the last three days. So, you know, if you think about it, I've got a free Jaden Braff now if I just paid 273 for Song. Yes, there's external factors. He's just got to move to the Geon buck. But, you know, it wasn't... I don't think the move caused that much of a price movement, right, on its own. It's similar leagues, he might get more points, he might get less points, he'll probably get slightly more. But what happened is he was just so low that no one really wanted to pick him up. And then when, you know, a, an event happens that makes him in demand again, people want him. They realise, you know, he's actually quite affordable and they just pick him up and the price goes up. So, you know, I won't be selling him here. If you've watched my um, when to sell episode, it's when he's more valuable than someone else's team. And for me, Song's still undervalued. He is going to get, you know, hopefully a really good start for the Gion Buck and continue to be one of the best scorers in the under 23s. He's only 21 years old. I was so fortunate that he didn't move to, you know, Bundesliga 2, like Ayo Tanaka or someone. But, you know, a success is a success, success nonetheless. So, you know, pat myself on the back for that. And if any of you did do the same, because I was quite bullish on him, you know, I said stuff like, you know, there's no way he goes lower than this and things like that. If any of you did listen to that advice and buy him or at least consider him, do let me know in the comments. It could be cool to know if I had any influence or helped anyone in some way. But overall, I think that's it for this episode. Uh, if you didn't catch the last um, kind of episodes, I've now broken my channel down into separate sections. They are um, diff different playlists and they have different thumbnails depending on their color. So if you want to look at, say, green, it's going to be scouting. It's really for anyone. The blue thumbnail starting so rare playlist is for, you know, new joiners. And you kind of have the My So Rare journey that is red and blue. And you have the So Rare Made Easy, which is red. And overall, it's just, you know, So Rare Made Easy is for almost anyone, but you know, it's where you want to gain that edge. You want to have as much knowledge as you can. So yeah, go check out those playlists. If you did enjoy this video, please subscribe. And yeah, thanks for all the support recently. Again, you know, I'm still gaining subscribers and you know, it really means a lot to me, but um, overall, thanks a lot. I really hope your server is going as well as mine recently. And yeah, looking forward to the new seasons. Thanks.